Jade Rikus informs us on Hollywood's latest fashion events and the upcoming entertainment site, Dirty and 30. Ferguson and the protests around the country. We give you the latest. Also, we will talk about events and tips for the upcoming holiday season. This and much more coming up on Los Angeles Community Connection TV. Welcome to Los Angeles Community Connection. I'm Colette Amin. And I'm James Inez. Now for our top story. The Inside Man is a movie about an elaborate bank heist that is successful due to the criminal's ingenuity. He builds a false wall in the bank that he easily walks out days after the robbery without detection. It seems that life is imitating art because in Atlanta, Georgia, a child was kidnapped and hidden by his father and stepmother behind a false wall when the police came looking for him. Four years ago, the boy's mother reported him missing to Child Protective Services, though not to police. Since she is an immigrant, she didn't understand the law and what she needed to do. Four years later, someone who has yet to be identified called the police to have them check the house for the child. Two hours later, they go back and un uncover the false wall, and the boy apparently got a hold of a cell phone, downloaded an app, and contacted his mother in Florida. The father and stepmother have been charged with false imprisonment, child endangerment, and obstruction. The reunion was a tearful one for the mother and her son, seeing each other for the first time in four years. They were really nice people. They, they were open, you know. They were like, hey, you know, come over anytime you want. Gosh, it, it's right up on our nose, and we could have done something if we had known, but he was never in distress, it didn't seem like. Roller coaster fanatic? Good news for you adrenaline junkies out there. Orlando, Florida will be the home of the Skyscraper, the world's tallest roller coaster. The 570-foot tall attraction is meant to be a full experience of thrills from the beginning to the end, starting with the thrill seekers taking an elevator to the observation deck, which opens up to a breathtaking view of Orlando, Florida and a nearby beach. Once seated on the ride, riders will be taken on a four-minute, 65 miles per hour journey of never-ending turns, twists, and flips. The mega attraction is also next to, or to the Orlando Eye, a 400-foot Ferris wheel, all housed at the very social Orlando Eye Drive 360, a modern, chic, multi-purpose complex that boasts dining, attractions, shopping, and entertainment. The skyscraper is set to launch its first ride in 2017. Jade Richais joins us for, to talk about the latest fashion, fashion events in Hollywood. Jade, what's going on in the world of fashion? Thank you. The latest event happening was the fashion art music event at the Planet Salon in Hollywood, also representing Dirty and 30 with their entertainment website. We are here today at the fashion art music event at the Planet Salon in Hollywood. I'm thrilled to later on interview Stephanie and Stuart from Dirty and 30. They will talk about interesting details and background information about today's event and about their entertainment website, Dirty and 30. So uh, before that, let's go inside and take a look around. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with Stuart and Stephanie today. <laughs> um, dirty and 30 girls. So um, how did you guys like the party so far? The party's awesome. There's so many fun elements from people getting these incredible hair, like braids done, curls done, makeup. There's fashion shows, photo shoots, and live performances. So that's a Dirty and 30 approved type party. I saw my hairstylist from uh, 10 plus years ago tonight, yes. So that was crazy. It was it was remembering like when I used to do those oranges in my hair, which no longer oh. serve me. So it was a nice blast from the past. Beautiful, beautiful. So how is Dirty and 30 connected to this event today? Yeah, well, it's fun. Mikey, who's putting on this event, who is incredible and is known in the fashion world, invited me to come and co-host. And I was like, well, I got to have my girl Stephanie here and have Dirty and 30 represent. So we're here. I'm going to be doing some interviews myself behind the scenes. So we're just totally engulfed in this experience. But shout out to Mikey. She's so talented and puts on the best fashion events in LA. She does. The last one we went to was Endless Summer Nights and it yeah. was such an amazing event. What I love that she does is she incorporates music, art, everything in with fashion. So it's so nice to see all yeah. three of them in it's together. A, it's a full experience. It is. It's like we're uh, at an art installation. 
<laughs> Sounds beautiful. Thank you so much, girls, and I hope we have a great night out together. Thank you. You have fun too. And thank so you. <laughs> For more information about Planet Salon and fashion art music events, visit their homepage Endless Road Entertainment. Thank you so much. This is Jade reporting for Los Angeles Community Connection. It was an amazing event. Also, for upcoming events, entertainment, gossip and more, check out DirtyAnd30.com. Another bomb threat for LACCD, Los Angeles Community College District. In the past months, the local community colleges have seen a rise in serious threats on campus. The latest threat proved to be a hoax. Sheriff's deputies on the campus of Los Angeles City College were investigating a possible bomb threat against the school after receiving a suspicious phone call Friday evening, November 21st. A search of the campus turned up nothing, according to deputies on the scene. Sheriff's investigators said it appeared the caller may have been under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Fortunately, no evacuations were ordered. And when we return, we will talk about LA's new valet parking app at Runyon Canyon. As well as the latest from Ferguson. We'll be back after the short break. Hello, I'm Dr. Shyan Mustafa, geophysicist with the USGS. Earthquakes in California can strike anywhere, anytime, causing major damage to our structures, roads, and lives. Prepare to survive by practicing how to drop, cover, and hold on. Create an earthquake emergency kit that includes an emergency backpack with food and water, a radio, and a first aid kit. And last, but certainly not least, prepare a family disaster plan. Remember, don't be scared, be prepared. For more information, log on to www.ready.gov. Welcome back to the show. From New York to Los Angeles and dozens and dozens of cities in between, protesters flooded the streets to denounce a Missouri grand jury's decision not to indict Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. A day after the country learned Wilson won't face criminal charges for killing an unarmed teenager, Michael Brown, protests sprouted up in more than 170 U.S. cities. Some demonstrations blocked bridges, tunnels, and major highways. But unlike the violence that erupted in Ferguson, the protests across the country were mostly peaceful. Take a hike up to Runyon Canyon and you'll notice something interesting, a valet service. It's always difficult to find parking on weekends near Runyon Canyon because of the many people that frequent the popular hiking destination. Enter Curbstand, a mobile valet parking app. Curbstand wants to be the Uber of valet parking. They have 70 locations in Los Angeles and want to expand. Established valet companies have always worked events, but with the mobile revolution, Curbstand decided to make it easier for people. Using social media, Curbstand was able to work the socialite Paris Hilton's 4th of July bash in Malibu after she post about, posted about it on Instagram. The reason behind most of these new services is convenience. People will pay for convenience and anything that will save them time. Curbstand is no different. If you ever are stuck in Los Angeles without a place to park, don't worry, there's an app for that. Tis the season for coughs, colds, sore throats, and fevers. Here's how to prepare for a healthier flu season. A flu vaccine is the first and most important step in protecting against the flu. Follow these additional tips to stay healthy this season. Wash your hands frequently using soap and water for about 20 seconds. Avoid touching your eyes and nose and mouth. Viruses are often spread after a person touches something that is contaminated with the virus and then touches his or her eyes, nose, or mouth. Cover your mouth or tuck it into your elbow when coughing or sneezing. Then wash your hands afterward. Last but not least, avoid contact with the people who are sick. When possible, avoid shaking hands and keep hand sanitizer on standby and close by. At least 40 people were killed as Syrian Kurdish fighters and ISIS militants clashed in the northern Syrian city of Kobani. 
Kurdish, uh, Kurdish fighters belonging to the People's Protection Units, known as YPG, have been locked in a struggle with ISIS fighters for the border city in the shadow of Turkey, with 100,000 desperate Syrian Kurds fleeing to Turkish territory. Five ISIS suicide bombers blew themselves up using cars and explosive belts near the besieged Kur Kurdish city, according to the London-based opposition group Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Clashes also erupt west of Kobani, with ISIS using tanks to advance and firing at least 110 shells on various areas of the city. The monitoring group reported at least 10 YPG fighters and 25 ISIS militants were killed during the clashes, according to the SOHR, Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. Turkey, the European Union, and the United States consider the PKK a terrorist organization. Every week, we like to spend some time getting to know someone who inspires us. Sheila D. joins us for an exclusive interview with a potential Los Angeles City candidate on our segment, Off the Red Line. Hello, and welcome to Los Angeles Community Connections interview segment, Off the Red Line. I'm Sheila D. Today I have Los Angeles City Council District 4 candidate Jay Bieber here with me today. Jay, I understand that your political foray actually began with being a community advocate and you got rid of Los Angeles's red light cameras. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yeah, actually um, that was the first thing that I, I knew nothing about city politics or anything like that before I got involved in this. But then I saw a report on the news about red light cameras and how they made the intersections less safe, not more safe. So I started researching it myself and I realized that the city government was not getting the proper information and that you could actually improve safety at the intersections by doing some engineering changes. And so I just thought, hey, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to let them know what the, what the answer is and what the truth is and they're going to change stuff and a year and a half later we, we got that done. That's wonderful. So you were actually successful in getting rid of those red light cameras. That's correct, yeah. Wonderful. And you even achieved a certificate for this. Yeah, they, uh, they gave me a certificate for, for getting rid of the program that they had been running for 10 years. So. <laughs> well, I am thankful that you got rid of those cameras. You're welcome. <laughs> so now you're running for city council, District 4. Why the sudden jump into politics? Well, I really don't even think of it as jumping into politics. I think of it as offering myself up as a servant to the community. If they want to hire me to go down to City Hall and fight for them every day, that's really the way that I think about it. Um, and the reason is the same reason with the red light cameras. I think that the City Council doesn't make good decisions. They make political decisions, not common sense decisions. And I think we need somebody down at City Hall every day fighting for common sense solutions and not you know, the political choices, the political um, shenanigans that go on every day. That sounds perfect. I would really love to see a candidate like that in office. So what are the changes that you hope to affect? Well, the first thing is that we have to recognize that the city has a huge problem with offering core services is because this, mm -hmm. the council has not spent their money wisely or the people's money wisely in um, the last couple of decades. And so we had a huge budget deficit, we have a huge pension liability problem, and so we need to fix those things so we can offer core services. And I'll give you an example. One of the things is that, you know, they want to put out a, um, a tax increase to fix streets and sidewalks. Well, that should come out of the general fund. They spent the money on something else, and now they're coming to the people and asking them to raise their own taxes. And they starve the things that you absolutely need, but w and then spend the money on things that you would never vote to raise your taxes for. And so it's what kind of a shell game. What do they spend the money on? Well, they spend the money on um, giveaways to special interests. Mm. Um, they spend their money on uh, raises for um, employees. Now, you want to give people, you know, a fair wage, and you want to and you want to make sure that they have what they need in order to live in the city. But city workers make way more than what um, the average person makes for similar jobs. And especially the DWP, they make 20% more than what the city worker, the regular city workers wow. make. So it's it's really a problem in terms of reining in that um, that part of the budget, uh, which is employee cost, because it makes up like 80% of the budget. Okay. 
And I understand that traffic and parking is another thing that you're working on. That's right. I'm working on parking reform as well. So we make that a little bit more equitable and we can allow people to get where they need to go without having to worry about getting a ticket, uh, you know, once they get there. And, and um, you know, street cleaning is a problem in terms mm. of giving out tickets. You know, most of the tickets are given for meters and street cleaning. That's over 50% of the tickets in the city. So we need to we need to create situations where the violations don't occur in the first place so we so people aren't getting these very expensive tickets what do you suggest as a solution well um, in terms of the parking solutions um, we have recommended that parking meters for example work like parking structures so if you have a credit card or if you have a smartphone you can start the meter running when you get there and then when you leave you, you end the time and the meter just charges you for the amount of time that you spent there. You don't have to guess in advance how much time you need. And that's a smart solution wow. to eliminate this problem. Because, and the city makes more money because you get charged for the actual time that you use. That sounds like a great solution. I know there's so many times that I've been like, oh, I just need five more minutes. Right. So to finish our segment up, what do you have to say to the voters of LA? Well, I think the thing to note, to, to understand is that you can make a difference. Your voice matters. And if you want something to be different, you have to vote for different people. You can't vote for the continual politicians, the staffs of the politicians who are going to continue the same old policies and status quo. You want something different? Vote for somebody outside of politics. Well, there you have it. We have Jay Bieber, a non-politician running for city council. So please go out there on March 3rd, 2015 and make your voice count. Go and vote. Thank you for joining us today with our interview series, Off the Red Line. After the break, we have more news from Los Angeles Community Connections. Stay tuned. Domestic violence doesn't know anything about discrimination. It could affect anyone regardless of age, race, gender, or sexual orientation. Only in the U.S., one in three women and one in four men suffer from domestic violence, and more than 10 million people are affected each year. Domestic violence doesn't stop at physical violence. It includes sexual assault, intimidation, and emotional abuse. Together, we can't stop domestic violence. A better home, a better world starts from home. If you or someone you know is going through this, please call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. Or you can also visit the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence website at www.ncadv.org for more information. Because, because love, love shouldn't, shouldn't hurt. hurt. Welcome back for more exciting community news. In Westwood in Irvine, California, University of California students rallied Tuesday to protest proposed tuition hikes. One day ahead of a UC Board of Regents meeting to consider the issues, students on the UCLA campus took their outrage to the campus malls. Led by UCLA law students, some carried signs, including one that read, Fund our future, not your paycheck. Hundreds more students held a similar rally at UC Irvine, joining their counterparts from other US UC campuses across the state. The proposed hike would raise annual tuition 5% over the next five years, resulting in students paying more than $15,000 by 2019. UC President Janet Napolitano noted that tuition rates have been frozen for three years. If the 5% increase is approved, it will bump tuition for the 2015-2016 school year by $612 to $12,804. Out-of-state students would pay the same increase rate, but plus the non-resident fee of $22,878, which would also increase by the same percentage. Student Erica Schultz called the proposed tuition hike a punch in the gut. The homeless population has increased significantly in the past few years due to the economy and housing crisis. Without a place to stay, many people are going through great lengths to find anything, whether legal or illegal. Squatters will find any area on a property that doesn't belong to them and set up shop. Abandoned houses, warehouses, and now the Los Angeles City College former basketball gym. According to staff and custodians, squatters have been found on campus multiple times and the sheriff had to be called to remove them. 
Walking through the former gym, a custodian found an old hose cut and hung from a stall to create a makeshift shower. Empty shampoo bottles and soap wrappings were also strewn around the room. The homeless situation will not be ending anytime soon and it could be dangerous for students. The only option is trying to steer them to nearby shelters. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. The holidays are a joyous time, so, so don't let small things stop you and your Christmas cheer. Here are a few tips and a fun event that can help ease some stress and add entertainment. For the airport traveler, ship your presents and belongings via FedEx or UPS to skip airport fees and lost holiday luggage saga. For the foodie, be creative. Reuse your leftovers to make other delicious dishes and also freeze uneaten pies and cakes for later use. For that impossible friend that you just can't find gifts for, go local. You'll find the most unique and personal items at local boutiques, bakeries, and nurseries, and markets. For the families, a, Grin a Grinchmas at Universal Studios is a fun holiday treat. Kids can listen to Dr. Seuss's classics read by Cindy Lou from Dr. Seuss, Whoville, all under a 60-foot crooked Christmas tree. Grinchmas running on weekends December 3rd through the 14th and daily December 20th through January 3rd, 2015, you can find discounted tickets at kijubi.com. That's Kijubi. I hope these tips and events come in handy for the 2014 holiday season. Arson may be suspected in the case of an early morning fire in the Los Angeles Fashion District that took a total of 80 LA firefighters to extinguish the fire. The K1 clothing store located in the 1400 block of Santa Fe Street in downtown LA was unfortunately destroyed by a huge November 29th fire that had flames shooting 30 feet into the early morning sky. Nearby businesses that were in close vicinity of the wholesale clothing store only received smoke and water damage. Officials got a spark of concern upon seeing a red tag in front of the building, causing concern for a possible arson attack, although not ruled an official arson. Investigators used trained dogs to search the damaged building for suspicious materials. They determined that the fire was suspicious. The wholesale clothing store had fabric material inside that could have also helped fuel the fire. Fortunately, nobody was hurt during the blaze. A further investigation is currently underway. At least five new films produced by Sony Pictures like Fury and Annie have leaked online, resulting in around two million downloads from file sharing sites. Sony is investigating allegations that North Korean hackers are responsible for the leaks, according to the reports. The attack on Sony's corporate system occurred on November 24th as an image of a skeleton appeared on the studio's computers with an accompanying message saying, hacked by hashtag GOP, a group known as Guardians of Peace. The GOP threatened to release secrets and top secrets of Sony. Coming up next is Roger Biggs Smith to share his opinion on going back to school as an older student. We will be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rushark, and I'm a feminist. <laughs> yes, I believe the collaboration between women, men and women is needed to ensure gender equality around the world. A look back at history illustrates that women have made great strides against the fight for equality, including women's suffrage, equality in the workplace, and equal opportunity in education. However, gender bias continues in the USA and around the world. Therefore, we are in need of a solidarity movement for gender equality. And that's when the He For She Foundation comes in. The He For She Foundation is a solidarity movement that brings in one half of humanity for the other half of humanity. Because gender equality is not only a woman's issue, but a human rights issue that requires your participation. Please join us at our campaign, www.heforshe.org. Thank you. Los Angeles Community Connection strives to give a voice to all members of our community. Roger Biggs Smith joins us this week to share his opinion on going back to school as an older student. This is Roger Biggs Smith, LACC News. 
Today, I interviewed a lot of returning students coming back to school to get themselves re-educated. Coming back to school and dealing with uh, students that are half my age, well, you know, I would, you would think I, I would feel something different, but I actually don't. I'm, I just feel that I'm just uh, picking up where I might have left off or something. It's, uh, it's no different. I mean, they're here for the same reasons that I am. We're all here to, uh, to learn and advance ourselves and expand our horizons and uh, hey that's good well you know uh, when you're teaching you forget how hard it is to be a good student okay. so uh, coming back to uh, college and and having to study and, and take four classes in a semester it's been a, a little bit of a shock but you know I'm getting used to it and, and because I taught I know a lot about how to study and how to uh, listen in class and stuff like that so I'm taking a Grip class, sound class, cinematography class, directing class, I even took an acting class. So these are all brand new things for me. And uh, the newer they are, the harder it is because uh, when you get older, your memory isn't quite as good. The younger generation, I would say I have, I was just determined money, money, money. <laughs> what every high school student have the new attire, the new shoes. But as I got older, I would say all of that stuff really doesn't matter. Those are material things that can be bought and bought any time in your life. And school is stuff that you can never learn anywhere else. Like going to school and learning what these professors kind of teach you is a one in a lifetime experience. And it sets you up for longevity in life. So I would say that it's actually great to come back to school. Wow, being a student again, remembering the days ringing of the school bell, apples for the good teachers, browns for the mean ones, counting the days of summer, trading toys on the playground, betting on who had cooties, yuck. School is over now, what, reality hits. What to do, time to get a job, bills to pay, rent, mortgage, daily life, love, marriage, kids, divorce, struggles, losing your job, making a plan B to start anew. Back to school again, as an older student, you see things a little clearer the second time around. Learning to juggle the pressures of work and school is hard. Competing with the younger students in, this, in class can make you feel overwhelmed. It took me an hour to finish a midterm that everyone else finished in 15 minutes. It's depressing having to be back at school again, looking at the mistakes the younger students are making. It's a mirror for me, and I see myself in them I wish I could go back and do it right the first time. But despite all these pressures, this old dog isn't out of the fight yet. Being an older student swimming today in today's pond, a word of advice, swim smarter. When you see bait, think before you bite. Thank you for sharing, Roger. Don't forget to follow LACCTV on Facebook at LACCTV and on Twitter at LACC underscore TV. Thank you for watching. I'm Colette Amin. And I'm James Inez signing off for Los Angeles Community Connection.